Hello, welcome. Uh, today we're going to look at the main later life benefits, how to claim them and why 4 out of 10 older people aren't claiming their benefit entitlement. Firstly, I said we, so I'd like to welcome Emma Lowndes and Lucy Martin. Hello. Hello. Emma is a carer, she looks Buckinghamshire, and she works in business and marketing consultancy, so busy bee. Emma was struck by how hard it was to find and access the support that she and Marge needed, so she started blogging tips and links that help carers save money and time on mordenmum.com. Lucy is the mordenmum.com. Lucy is the adult carers service lead at Carers Bucks. Carers Bucks is the Buckinghamshire based charity supporting unpaid carers. Um, they offer information, advice and guidance, and emotional support to people in a caring role from the age of five and upwards and that was five yeah. years old. Yeah, we support about around about a thousand young carers. So. As young as five, yeah. it's heartbreaking. <laughs> um, ladies, welcome. We've chosen to discuss later life benefits today. It uh, accounts for about 56% of all of the welfare spending in Great Britain, um, 120 spending in Great Britain, um, 124 billion pounds in 2019, 2020. And because we're all passionate about people claiming the benefits that they're entitled to and getting the right information and advice. Um, something that I hear from families all the time is why are benefits I hear from families all the time is why are benefits so complicated? Why do they have to be so complicated? So here's the question: Are are they complicated? Is it too hard to claim them, um, or does it have to be that complex a process to make sure that the right support goes to the right? Um, given that four out of ten older people have unclaimed benefit entitlement. Is there a problem with the system or is it working for most? Um, I just wanted your thoughts really. Uh, Emma, Lucy, what were your thoughts on why these benefits aren't being claimed? I think um, I think a lot of the people just not understanding that there are certain things they can, they can claim. Um, in Buckinghamshire there are a lot, there's a high um, proportion of what we call self-funders. Um, and people who are self-funders may never have come into contact with uh, the benefit system or social care system and they may simply not and they may simply not be aware that there's something that they could they could claim so i think that's that's one and obviously um an organization like us we're able to raise that awareness and point people in the right direction yeah. <clears throat> i think sometimes there's also um there is a stigma attached sometimes to um to, to um to claiming benefits for some people that um it conjures up a very definite idea for them um, and they think perhaps this isn't something for us you know we have um we've never you know been involved in the benefit system so um you know what will that what will that mean will it mean someone coming to check up on us or yeah. coming to you know delve into delve into into things so I think it, it can be off-putting for people yeah, definitely can't. yeah I, I echo all of that I'd also say that sometimes the person you're looking after will say um, I don't need the charity mm, I'm quite yeah. self-sufficient mm. I've looked after myself all these years so I um, yeah. don't need it, so, um, yeah. don't need it. Um, and awareness is definitely a thing. And there's a thing, and there's some urban myth as well. I remember reading about a benefit, attendance allowance to be specific, and uh, my husband said, well, no, Marge won't be eligible for that. Mm, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, she's actually had, um, applied for it for uh, my great aunt. He said, no, have a look, yeah. do it, kind of thing. Now, to paperwork and all the rest of it, um, you know, there are a lot of questions in that question to the you know what what stops people um i think there's a lot of red tape i think it's because the benefit system has grown the decades with bits being added on and added mm. on and there's bits of paper but there's new technology coming in and i think it is very 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 confusing yeah. the department of work and pensions does their best you know but it's very very confusing um is it easy i think you have to be incredibly dog is it easy i think you have to be incredibly dogged about it i if i'm ever doing anything like this i set aside a day mm. to say like you know i'm not gonna you know try and you know plan a day where i'm not gonna not gonna do anything get a cup of tea uh 
yeah. get everything I think I'll need very often the right the, I, I need proper time yeah. to think about and do it all in one go don't try and do it bits because you'll forget yeah. what you put in and all that kind of thing do you think sometimes it it's as well do you think it's sometimes people they've, ne they've never had the experience of claiming benefits and so care needs certainly comes a bit and so care needs certainly comes along and you have to deal with everything all at once oh, yeah. mm. and you have absolutely no idea yeah. it isn't that you de yeah. you don't know the word you don't decide not to no. claim it it's just you yeah. have no idea you don't know what you don't know that's true you don't know the vocabulary no, no and you, you don't, don't it's a jargon, the, jargon as well yeah the jar within jargons it. definitely and why are they asking me these questions? They seem very personal questions. Why are they asking me the same questions over and over yeah. again, yeah. but in a different <laughs> way? And that's and for people who have already come across it, though, Emma. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking more along yeah. the lines of people who have never engaged. They haven't got the form. They haven't realised there's lots of questions. It's They haven't realised it's a 28-page form. They just don't know. It's there. Yeah. No. Uh, and that, yeah. it, that's the lack of awareness. And for me, it's also around the change in your circumstances, the change in the circumstances creates, for me, the majority of the, un creates, for me, the majority of the unclaimed benefit entitlement. Yeah, it's easy, some sort of emergency, a fall typically even sometimes, but yeah, I, th I think it's the fact that, it's like the dentist, you don't ever consciously think about, right, I must plan for that, prepare for that. You go and you have to. Yeah. This is, so, um, so yeah, why would you? think about it. It's one of those distress bracket purpose, um, quite literally sometimes uh, yeah. in brackets. So yeah, so you're, you, we are, when we, often we are, when we come to this, very ignorant. And it's a shame that GPs, yeah, um, they could do people a lot more to raise awareness. who might, they could do people a lot more to raise awareness. who might c come alongside us while we're mm. with our older yeah. Um, relative or whatever might notice and think hang on a second this dynamic is changing in this family just a bit of signposting absolutely. a leaflet absolutely. or a referral to an organisation yeah. like Taylor's Bucks a leaflet absolutely. or a referral to an organisation yeah. like Taylor's Bucks yeah. could really help yeah. these those people. kind of trigger points where it might be for example a bereavement mm. thinking much wider from the family dynamic which is not just this person may well have been being cared for a carer, but also their company, the social inclusion, and the, 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 the little bit of extra, the, the extra support, not just physical and emotional, but financial. Um, it's a bigger picture, isn't it? So a bereavement, not just managing the person that's been. The administration, I think maybe is in a conversation for a, another day, the administration and the reviews and the paperwork and the complexity and the it appeals is. and the, and that's I, a bit scary stuff. I think, I think the, you know, it's overwhelming, I think as well, especially if you're new to caring, it's, it's overwhelming. It's another thing that you need to, that, you know, someone is asking you to think, you to think about at a time mm. when your head is probably completely full yes. of everything that's going on. Um, and you, you mentioned, Emma, you know, why are you asking me this question? Why are you asking me the same question over and over? And the forms are very much like that. Yeah. Um, so it's almost an exercise in understanding how to fill the forms in, which yeah. for a lot of people, they're just not really, you know, yes. haven't not really, you know, yes. haven't really got the time to devote yes. to that. Certainly, and you've hit the nail on the head, really. That's certainly, um, absolutely, of the disability benefits because you're completing those forms yourself mm. and it's about your circumstances. And so it brings us into what are these later life benefits? What are the benefits that we're talking yeah. about? Um, and, and fundamentally, the benefit system is split into two. There are benefits that are not means tested. They're not interested in your financial wherewithal, your income, your savings, etc. And by and large, those are the disability related ones. And then there are some that are means tested, the ones that support a lower income or maybe not. That are means tested, the ones that support a lower income or maybe not, you know, not quite the, the savings that mm. um, we'd all like to, to, to have when, we were, when we're older. Um, and I think for us to talk about the different types of benefits, and when we talk about later life benefits, the, 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 the most, the biggest one then, if you like, is your state pension. Um, accounting for £99 billion, 80% of the, of the later life benefit spend. I, the one thing that I'd like to say here though is, remember, 
you still got to claim that. So do you that you've still got to apply for it. Um, and that sometimes just really does go un unknown, mm. um, mm. That, that you've actually got to claim it. Um, most people say, I didn't know that. So, I don't uh, think I knew that. I just assumed, yeah, I suppose. I didn't know that. Yeah. Marjorie was drawing her pension already when she came to live with us, so okay. I wasn't aware. Yeah. Marjorie was drawing her pension already when she came to live with us, so okay. I wasn't aware. Yeah, yeah, that's no. interesting. I don't that think I would have thought No, I've got that, to actually. don't think I've no, got a claim no. this. Mm. No, it's not automatic, I'm afraid. Oh, thanks, Nick. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's one that we've come across, and we've come across people who are older and are not getting their state pension for that reason. We've come across people who are older and are not getting their state pension for that reason. Gosh, yeah. right. I okay. mean, um, they're living on something else, obviously. Yes, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's an entitlement. And, and, and the other bugbear for state pension often is people don't consider that to be a benefit. They consider it an earned right. Yes. It's something yeah. you've paid and who's fallen upon hard times. Mm. You've earned yeah. that. Which well, can you remind us, Nicola, because I have a feeling you know. Okay. When can you it's start claiming your... Depends on your age, okay. doesn't it? Yeah. So, is um, it different for men and women? Yeah, well, they, or is it being it's moving all the time. Yeah, so what is it um, right Mine now? was, we were going to be 65 weren't we and the women um, right mine now? was we were going to be 65 weren't we and the women's was 60 and now we're all 68 and I'm going to be about 73 so um, there is a really really easy pension age calculator uh, on the internet if you're on the internet mm -hmm. gov.uk they've got some fantastic bits of information and some cal retirement age um, okay that so sounds really easy yeah, yeah. You literally just put your dirty birth in but so yes I'm um, and unfortunately for these poor ladies who are who are expecting to get their pension at 60 and then 63 and then 65 now uh, not so really much it's no. a shame yeah, yeah lost their case and it, it's, yeah. it's a shame different uh, it's, it's yeah. a scandal um, and outrageous. yeah so pension unsurprisingly accounts for the vast vast majority of later life benefit spend but the ones that I think we would like to sort of talk about would be the disability related benefits, wouldn't we today? Yeah. yeah. And the disability related benefits and the disability related benefits certainly for people in later life are not means tested. They're not going to ask you about your money. No, so please please, please apply please, for them. Please. Mm, please. Do. Um, it's circumstantial, so do you need help? Usually do you need help from another person? But that certainly for attendance allowance, which is for somebody who, when they're first claiming it, is over 65. Um, you're, it's not, you don't have to have had a medical diagnosis. It's about the help that you need, not what's wrong with you. You can live alone, have had never, never had anybody walk through your front door and you may still be in front door and you may still be entitled to it. So please, it's about, can you show the need for help? with your personal care or daily living tasks, things that you do every day, probably several times a day, or do you need supervision to keep you safe? Now that doesn't mean somebody in the house with you all the time, it could be a pendant alarm. It doesn't mean somebody in the house with you all the time, it could be a pendant alarm. It could be, is there a risk of falling? That's the one that alerts me more often than not. Um, and the disability benefits for, for people in later life or older people, our attendance allowance and you still would sometimes find 65 um, before uh, the welfare reform act came in you would still be getting it so it's it doesn't mean that you automatically come off it but remember you can't get both it's one or other oh, yeah. and the one that replaced disability living allowance is personal independence payment that's the sort of payment is for somebody who's of a working age so usually it's attendance allowance for someone who's older or, or if they've carried disability living allowance through. Uh, but you can't get all through, you can only have one of those. And it, it's wholly determined by the age that you are when you first claim it. Um, and, and there are lots of people, we will first claim it. Um, and, and there are lots of people, we will talk about in a little while who can help you with those forms, who mm -hmm. can help you if you, you know, tell you. Yeah, I'd like to add a bit that yeah. I'm sure you would Lucy mm. like to add bit to all of those. I'd also say that in a bit of um, kind kindness I think by the uh, Disability Living, uh, sorry, by the uh, Department of Work and Pensions on attendance allowance is that if you have uh, an older relative who's been given a terminal diagnosis 
yeah. then you are fast tracked onto the high rate yeah. of HIV immediately. Yes, yeah. within seven days. Yeah, that's really, that's really important. And, and you can even claim without that individual who's received a diagnosis, you might even be managing how they hear yeah. that diagnosis. Yeah. Um, you can do, apply for it without them knowing. So someone else can yeah. apply on your behalf, which is really yes. good, really kind. Yeah. So they yeah. apply on your behalf, which is really yes. good, really kind. Yeah. So that's good. Um, and the important thing with the tenancy allowance is apply it as soon as possible. But, and it's backdated, isn't it? It can be backdated. No, no. no oh, no. Oh, Nicola's shaking her head. Oh, it could. So, so they will. So a tenancy allowance is payable from what they is payable from what they call the date of claim. Okay. Yeah. So the date that the Department of Works and Pensions yeah. knows about you. So the yeah. day you ring up and order the form, okay. or the day that yeah. you go yeah. through the computer and and go through the gateway. Yeah. So they know you you have expressed yeah, interest yes, if you like. Yeah, that's it's not it can take a few you know, yeah, That's a very good point. Yeah. 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 Illness and yeah. issues. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So yes, but you're absolutely yeah, I right. I guess from my point of view, it's usually when you're well down the road of needing yeah. it, and you just don't yeah. know. And yeah. then uh, yeah, and f you know, for a long time you've needed mobility aids, you yes. know, help getting up in the yes. morning, help getting washed. Health time you've needed mobility aids, you yes. know, help getting up in the yes. morning, help getting washed, health eating, help yes. going to sleep, that kind of thing. So I beg your pardon. No, that's no, a very good. Thank you for keeping yes. us honest. No, so yeah. because you're um, you because we're so. We just carry on in stoic silence yeah, yeah. and we just deal yeah. with whatever we need to deal with on a daily basis, when need increases, we just deal with it, don't we? Yeah. Um, and so we forget what we're doing on a daily basis for maybe family members or for a loved one, um, spouse, whatever. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, you've, you're, you've usually already qualified that mm. period mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you think about yeah. this. You've already qualified that mm. period Mm, before mm, you think about yeah, this yeah yeah, yeah and my, my build, i think we need to, i'm sure lucy's got some good examples she wants to share but i would just say when you fill out the form um maybe get help to do it because you you shouldn't get very emotional about it you should not you should write only the facts you shouldn't get very emotional about it you should not you should write only the facts and keep a copy so that should you get asked should anything get lost should you at be asked to do it again uh, need to take a social worker through it or anything in the future for a different purpose, then you've got yourself a file just so you've got it there. So yeah. you've got it, you know, it's easy to access it because, you know, when you do sort of begin on this journey, there are so many things to remember, so many different organisations that you'll come into contact with. It's just really useful just to have a file that's from, you know, you can get hold of. Yes. And if you do need to reproduce paperwork, it's yes. there for work, it's yes. there for you. Yes. Um, I would. Um, I would say it's, it's quite interesting when you think about, you know, when you get when you apply for a tenants allowance, and you probably are already doing all of these things. Um, and I think one of the sticking points sometimes, one of the hurdles for a tenants allowance for people, is the nature of the form. Hurdles for a tenants allowance for people is the nature of the form. Um, and I think you're looking at, you know, various different questions that are really focusing on what this person needs help with. So the kind of flip side of that is, you know, what they need help with, i.e. what they can no longer really do for themselves. And yeah. so it can be quite a hard thing to fill in. It's a long form, it's 28, yeah. 29 pages so long. Strong, huh? And you're, you're focusing on what the person can no longer do, what they now need help to do, and what in many, many cases they will always need help to do. So it can be quite a kind of, you know, by the time you've finished it, and there are various ways you've finished it, and there are various ways of filling it in. You can get a hard copy, so you can, you know, if you prefer to write a little bit, leave it, come back to it, or you can do it online. So there are various ways of filling it in, but <clears throat> the, the main thing is that you are focusing on these things, these areas where somebody needs help, and I think that's probably sometimes a bit of a barrier for yeah. people as barrier for yeah. people as well. It's yeah. rather gloomy. Yeah, it it's is. Gloomy. It's, it's, it's really yeah. Empty. It is. It's, and that's why you need to be objective as well. Yeah, you need to not yeah. get too emotional when you're filling it in because it is yeah. a series of questions yeah. um, that you just need to focus on. That very factual, yeah. um, and that's probably the the best way that we would advise approaching yes. it. I think sometimes it doesn't it because. Mm. You to complete the form, explain. It doesn't take into account all the positive things in your life, your good no, relationships, no, no. all no. the things that you can do. Yeah. You don't get awarded the benefit for that. So just be, just, just 
fill it in and then totally just put it to the side. Fill it in, do it, it's done then. Don't dwell. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Why have we spent a bit of time on these disability related benefit forms? And I think that's partly because there's a lot of people that don't claim them and they really yeah. should. Please, please, please think about it at yes. least. Secondly, because they can lead to other benefit entitlements. Mm -hmm. um, we have the means tested benefit entitlement. Some kinds, it can, they, these, the, the non means tested, the disability ones, can passport you to other benefits. Bigger benefits, benefits that might help you pay your rent, might cover the cost of your council tax, might give you a little bit of extra in the bank by way of pension credit as a means tested top up, a little bit of extra in the bank by way of pension credit as a means tested top up, an income top up for somebody who's got a lower income. Just because you've got savings doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be able to claim those things. Mm. If you get a disability benefit, it might mean that you're entitled to more. Mm. And so we go mean that you're entitled to more. Mm. And so we go back to the change in circumstances is that's why I think benefit entitlements missed. Mm. Your circumstances have changed, for example, you filled in this big benefit form, you've been awarded this disability benefit, now let's look again at your means tested entitlement because that could well have some more money coming to, to the pot. So think have another think um, the four billion pounds that uh, people in, who are older people who leave unclaimed the, major, the vast majority of it comes from pension credit pension credit is the means tested benefit for people old people mm. the department of works and pensions emma benefit for people old people mm. the department of works and pensions emma emma said this earlier quite right they've worked really hard trying to raise awareness mm. but Frankly, ladies, we've had this benefit for 16 years. Mm. Why are we still trying to raise raise awareness around Incredible. it? It's because the circumstances, just because you weren't entitled six months ago doesn't mean you're mm. not now. Um, and that's, I think that's really the, the, the main reason for it. So what, what triggers availability? Is it, can you summarise it? So simply? for pension credit, for example, uh, one good example might be that, um, and they may not have entitlement to pension credit because they're considered as a couple, you know, what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine too. Um, or what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine too, I should say, as I said, tell my husband. Um, but if, say, for example, one of those partners moves into long-term care, then from the benefit to long-term care, then from the benefits, from the Department of Works and Pensions benefit perspective, they are then assessed as two single people. Right. So say, for example, the husband, there's a need for the male partner to move into a care home. Female partners, and it isn't, I just say that it's more often the ladies that have a lower income than the gentleman. Mm -hmm. it might be that you're coming across a lady that's got the, a married woman's pension. Um, so a lower pension, uh, and so she may well have pension credit entitlement in her own right now because she's living entitlement in her own right now because she's living at home on her own, and it might help That's her nice. stay in the house that she's lived in for the last sixty years and doesn't want to leave. Mm. That's such a good point. I just uh, there must be so many people that are completely not yeah aware of that yeah. I that was so gosh, yes. amazing. Yeah. That's where the benefit thing about circumstances changing. Mm. That's where this means tested benefit. It, it, that's where it, it lays. Where the unclaimed benefit lays yeah. is the circumstances wow, have gosh. changed, and you don't think, oh well, I better check my pension credit entitlement. It's the last thing on your mind, isn't it, when you live nearest and dearest oh moving into care home? <laughs> no, no. Um, so we need that's to be getting that message one. across, don't we? That's a really, really common one. Is when a partner moves into care. We always do a full benefit check on both partners, um, and mm. sometimes you know it's, I can't think why, but it's more often the gentleman that wants to look after the ladies, the ladies, and it, the gentleman knowing that his wife or his partner can stay at home and have her own income, mm. even if really it's a benefit important. topped up income, mm. she can survive on that. Mm. Um, and therefore it helps you then look at a more long-term care planning for what well, I look at a more long-term care planning for well, either and or both actually yeah um, so really important and having savings doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to get that 
So please don't dismiss it because you've got a few quid in the bank. Um, and don't spend the few quid in the bank to, get, to give yourself entitlement because, because that won't wash either. <laughs> Um, but you know, sensibly, joking aside, yeah. give it some thought. There's a pension credit calculator online. There are agencies that can help you with a benefit check. There mm. are eight, you know, charities that can yeah. help you with that. Um, websites, blogs, more that can signpost you. Carers bucks that can provide information from the website and support for carers. Mm. From the care navigator's perspective, we can help with the forms. We can help with challenge, challenging benefit. Um, decisions there's there is help out there the Department of Works and Pensions may be able to give you a bit of support if your house back um, yeah so they've, they've done a couple of home visits for some of um, for some of our carers who've not been able not yeah. been able to fill the forms in themselves not been able to get out to access the support yeah um, in certain circumstances they will do the home visit and it's worked yeah. out really well that's good so, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 they can Yes, they can. I mean, I don't know if you've got if you think. Oh, actually. Yeah, I mean, I can. I can think of um, you know, kind of going back to the attendance allowance and and self funders who perhaps might not be aware that they're entitled to um to claim the attendance allowance. I can think of um, one particular um gentleman who was caring for his wife is caring for his wife um uh, she has, gentleman who was caring for his wife is caring for his wife um uh, she has dementia. And they are they're self funders, so you know um, his wife goes above the threshold for um, having care paid for, and they were just kind of managing along, you know, fairly well. But he was um, starting to get very, very tired. He was um, starting to get very, very tired, very overwhelmed, and um, he came into contact with us at Carers Bucks, and we were able to you know point him into getting um you know perhaps he might be able to claim the attendance allowance for his for his wife which he went on to do he filled the form out the lower rate attendance allowance which was great um but you know moving on to other benefits that you may then be entitled to because she had an official diagnosis of dementia and was then getting the attendance allowance they were also able to claim a 20 yeah 25 percent discount on their council tax um and that all uh, a significant amount per week yes. and the, the point really of, of the tale is that he used that money then to pay towards a day centre one day a week yeah. for his wife which has made a tremendous difference and it's interesting because I've been asked before or challenged before by other professionals about funder need to, to claim yeah. these you know why not just use the money and I think that shows a real kind of lack of awareness of the, the situation that many carers are in so self-funders or not self-funders you are often on a kind of you know day-to-day -day firefighting just getting through what you need to get through yeah. on that day you don't have the sometimes the thing just getting through what you need to get through yeah. on that day you don't have the sometimes the headspace to think all oh, right you know well let's let's uh, allocate a certain amount of money here and i could yeah. use it for this and that would help me and and my the person i'm caring for but actually to have that very tangible amount from the attendance allowance and the council tax and to be able to use that for a day, that kind of respite one day a week, yeah. which is good for both him and, you know, and yeah. for his wife. So it's, you know, it's really important, you know, I sound like a broken record sometimes, please, you know, attendance allowance, <laughs> you know, consider yeah. it, apply for it, contact us or yourself yeah, or, you know, or absolutely. look at Morden Mum, just, you know, yeah. make sure that you are, yeah, you know, or absolutely. look at Morden Mum, just, you know, yeah. make sure that you are getting what you are um, entitled to. Absolutely. Can I... Can I just pick up on two things there? So um, Lucy's mentioned self-funders, mm. and I'm mindful that uh, we use a lot of jargon in our world, in the social care world. Uh, health. And um, self-funders essentially is sort of a, a reference back to with the local authority or the council, social services, adult social care, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. Um, would you have to pay for that care yourself? And now that's a whole, Another topic, actually, and one that we will cover in, mm. in another podcast. But if you podcast, but if you and you did right, and Lucy rightly mentioned above a certain level, that is a means tested system. Um, so, yes, somebody who may be self funding. And the other thing is the second benefit, there's the, the apart from pension credit, the one that's also underclaimed is council tax benefit, yeah. council tax exemption. So council tax benefit is always means tested, but in order to support people who maybe have some means, 
they make the person or the property exempt. So if you have a severe mental health um, issue, it might be that the person themselves would be exempt. Which is one of those. Yeah, mm. so yeah. if you're living with dementia, for example, yeah. it's definitely worth thinking mm. about. If you're moving into long term, and if you have a physical disability that means you need a wheelchair indoors, or you need a, a room of your own for your own treatment, you would get, um, you'd have a reduction in the band of council tax that you, your, your house is. Or if, for example, you're moving into long term care, um, the house is empty, the, the property itself then would be exempt. So, um, for family members, just to be aware, don't keep paying council tax if you've got an empty property. It doesn't mean empty of furniture, it means if, if your loved one's moved into care. It doesn't mean empty of furniture, it means if, if your loved one's moved into care. So give that some thoughts, not always means tested. Um, if you need any help to complete uh, disability claim forms, obviously there are charities like Carers Bucks, Age UK, Citizens Advice, they may have volunteers that would be able to help you fill those in fill those in. Independ independent advice providers like Care Navigators um, would also be able to do that, have some useful information on the website, but their services are usually uh, chargeable, they're not free of charge. Um, I don't, anything either of you ladies would like to add before we kind of say thank you very much? I want to say, Nicola, I thought I'd read around, I thought I knew a lot, but I will be updating a couple of pages on Morden Mum, for sure, so thank you for that. So don't worry, by the time this is broadcast, Morden Mum will be finessed by a Nicola. <laughs> but the other thing is, is every little helps. Um, I manage finances under power of attorney. There's help how to um, write a power of attorney on Morden Mum, and I also write about other ways of... Um, other benefits that are not necessarily government provided but there are other benefits that you can you might be eligible for too so think things like making sure that when so think things like making sure that winter um, fuel payment is yeah. being tri mm. triggered yeah. you might get that relief on certain products um, if uh, you have a disability and you're the main user yeah. blue badge for getting around public transport um, TV license, as we know, or mm. not until then. But also, if you live in the same house as, as someone over 75, you can claim for the last, you know, if they've lived with you for a long time, you can claim for the TV license that you've been paying for for up to three or four years, which we do. Can so you? realise that, yeah, oh, you didn't like that. No, I didn't know yeah, that. Well, you see, it's yeah. so... Yeah. Sharing of information. Yeah. You see, it's yeah. so... Yeah. Sharing of information. Confusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've been paying for seven years. Well, yeah. I've been with we managed to get three, three or four years. Um, fuel costs, join oil bulk buying schemes. Make sure that the household that the elder is living in is benefiting. You know, they're doing you're doing your switching and yeah. you're looking at bulk costs. If you've got um, excessive uh, utility bills, you may well be able to yes. get a, a yeah. reduction on that if you're a yeah. vulnerable adult. There, there are lots of parts lots of ongoing they're hidden. benefits. <laughs> <laughs> but they're in there. They're I mean, unknown, I aren't they? Yeah. I've got, I know Seven Trent Water do one if you lose, yeah. you need to uh, do a lot of laundry. Yeah. Yeah. Washing. Uh, water do one if you lose, yeah. you need to uh, do a lot of laundry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of washing, then you can get yeah. um, relief. But I think yeah. you need to be, you need to be claiming providers, benefits. If yeah. you need to be warm, if you need to keep yeah. warm because of a disability or benefit, yeah. it might come into a this yeah. kind of... They're discretionary pots, I yeah. would say, yeah. uh, but certainly worth thinking. Mum, I've got a you know, finance section, but you know, it, sometimes, and, and for example, if should you need continence products, mm. if your local authority provides them free of charge, that saves £80 a month. Yeah. yeah. Now that... Yeah, no, was a di that makes a big difference. It does. Yeah. It's huge. You know, it's the yeah. difference between it paying for domiciliary care, not paying for domiciliary yeah, care. Yeah, you know. Do you still provide a phone and they don't use the phone, yeah. so why not just... And yes. redirecting mail so you're yes. not getting people preying on yeah. vulnerable people. Yeah, it's and your preference system, so yeah. not getting the nuisance yeah. calls. I know we're moving away from benefits, but it's just endless, isn't it? It is. I mean, that's a lot of stuff, though. So you start, yes. start with the most important. So start with the Start with the most important. So start with the tendons. Yeah. Yeah. So do you know? Do maybe one a week or one a month or something. But start with the one with the highest return. So I would definitely would start with attendance allowance and power of attorney if circumstances. Well, we can all deal we with the power. Of, we all need a power of yeah. passing power of attorney. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We all deal with the power. We all need a power of passing power of attorney. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely right. Absolutely, Just we're going to do, we'll cover, 
will certainly cover sort of legal capacity, powers mm. of attorney, deputy ships, etc. We're mm. doing a whole podcast on right. that, I think. Yeah. yeah, because it's so important, mm. really fundamentally important, mm. isn't it? Wow, ladies, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you to everyone. Thank, thank you. Yes, Ooh. thank you. Thank to you for listening. I hope that's helped. Um, it's helped you to think about some of the later life benefits and how to go about claiming them and the support that might be available. And um, yeah, look out for the other podcasts. We're going to do um, one on continuing healthcare funding, yeah, um, and then how to pay for it, <laughs> as well as power of attorney, legal capacity. So thanks very much. Sounds good. Great. Yeah. Thank you.